everyone, my name is Karan and today I am going to give a lecture on the basics of two dimensional projectile motion. So let's get started. Now before I start, we will need to brush up a little bit on our trigonometry basics like sine and cosine. Uh, so you may need to do that or if you already remember those or you are studying those in school if you are in 9th grade or 10th grade. Uh, you won't need to because you'll be learning it. So I don't want to get too much on that part. Let's get started with our first problem. Now in our first problem, we have a projectile which is being launched with a velocity of 10 meters per second, 45 degrees inclined to the air or the ground. It's 45 degrees launched. because it's a flat ground remember and in this case remember that air resistance is negligible otherwise we'll have to do a whole lot of variables otherwise it's pretty easy to do sine cosine and stuff with this now it goes and it lands at a flat ground and it, and it lands at a distance of s from the launcher and we are not going to make the cannon roll and go somewhere, we are just going to see this point where it lands and it touches down. So the formula is S velocity squared 2 times velocity squared times cos cosine theta times sine theta you may have learnt it as sine theta times cosine theta but it's the same commutative property just like sorry about that I didn't mind it divided by g and now we are considering it to be on earth where there is no atmosphere because we are ignoring the air resistance so yeah it's kind of odd that there is no atmosphere on the earth but we are going to do it just for this problem sake so now we put in our variables theta is equal to 45 degrees which is just the angle it's used to represent the angle which is 45 degrees in this case v is the velocity which is 10 meters per second inclined 45 degrees we are not going to count that because it's speed. 2 times so g here because it's on earth we are going to consider it as let's consider it as, as 10 ok but it's actually 9.8 something I don't want to go to confusing it's equal to 2 into 10 squared into cosine 45 into sine 45 sorry I'm not able to get a little bit sorry about that uh, times divided by 10 sorry so let's two square ten, uh, it's 100 and it's and cosine 45 and sine 45 is same which is it's the same it's the square root of 2 divided by 2 now what happens square root of 2 divided by 2 times square root of 2 now it's a basic fraction multiplying thing the square root of 2 into square root of 2 is 2 and 2 into 2 is 4 so that's 2 divided by 4 that's half so half and yeah but this half and this 2 just get cancelled off so we have 10 squared divided by 10 which is just 10 equals 10 meters now we just noticed a loophole there is a shortcut to this method if your launch angle is 45 degrees 
then there is a fast formula which you can use because cosine 45 and sine 45 multiplied gives half and that half cancels with 2. So the fast formula is, I'm gonna rub this if you're, if you haven't noted it down, if you want to note it down, you can pause the video and copy all this stuff if you want. So because I'm gonna rub it. Now, when s is equal to v squared divided by g, because the two sine cos sine theta and cosine theta they cancel off, so you have this fast formula if theta is equal to 45 degrees. So you can use that very quickly to solve sums because v squared squaring is easy and dividing is also easy. So you can do that. Now, let's go for a second problem. Now, for a second problem. Remember, if you haven't seen this video, like, uh, the, we've made a video called Superhero Science Flight Part 1, in which one of my friends who is taking the video here, uh, is trying to fly, and, uh, we are going to use something like that. Imagine, and his and my friend is gonna and in this problem, my friend is going to run and jump off a cliff and land on ground again with an with a constant uh, ve uh, horizontal velocity of five meters. That means its velocity here everywhere it's 5 meters in the horizontal direction I'm and the height of the cliff is 19.6 meters and this distance which is what we need to find is s so for this problem we need to break it into the x axis and the y axis In the x axis, V, I, X is equal to 5 meters per second. And the, and the displacement in the x direction is S bar is unknown and now for the y component the y component the initial velocity is v bar i y is equal to well some people would say it as 5 or some people would say it as 9.8 because that's the acceleration but wait a second he's starting from a horizontal velocity of 5 meters per second and he's not actually straight away jumping down right so that means his initial velocity is supposed to be 0 and uh, his displacement s y is equal to some people would write it as 19.6 meters in this problem but that's wrong because displacement is a vector quantity and vector quantities always need a direction so we'll have to write minus 19.6 Now for the acceleration. V bar x equal to now for the acceleration. Because we are on earth and yeah, again we are assuming air resistance is negligible because there's no atmosphere on this earth. I mean this earth in this problem. Uh, the acceleration 
will be 9.8 meters per second square. Uh, so now we are going to calculate the time. Now the time is always going to be the same for the x component and the y component because we need to because that's going to help us to find the distance here. So we are going to because we don't know the final velocity in the y direction uh, when these values are there uh, which is the displacement minus 19.6 meters per second acceleration minus 9.8 meters per second squared so the formula is p is equal to and uh, the square root of 2 in two into the acceleration divided by sorry the 2 into the displacement divided by the acceleration so 2 into minus 19.6 divided by the acceleration which is minus 9.8 meters per second squared it's hard to write these units Two meters, two meters. Um, the displacement is minus. Two. So these will cancel out to give two into the square root of two into two, which is four, and the square root of four is two seconds. So the time is equal to the is equal to two seconds. Now we can easily go for the x component. The time is equal to 2 seconds. So our formula is S bar X is equal to and uh, remember that in this the acceleration is 0 because it's going in the same direction every second. So the and the speed is also constant. So the acceleration depends on the magnitude as well as the velocity which are both same uh, and the direction sorry which are both same so the acceleration is zero. So this equal to V bar V R O I X times P it will actually go plus plus half A T squared but because acceleration is zero we will ca uh, we'll cancel out that term and not writing in the equation but in some problems you will find that there is acceleration so uh, be sure you to use the other formula the complete one is equal to 5 into 2 almost finished our problem and that so that's quite a lot and you know did go 10 meters away from the cliff vertical cliff so yeah now this shows you how you can use uh, standard physics formulas to everyday life things like uh, those daredevils and stuff trying to run from cliffs and jump or uh, you can those and if you are like trying to fire an aim and stuff and I don't know all those things and I don't know what sports are these and all stuff I don't know you can use these to calculate your motion your speed and stuff by just arranging rearranging the formulas so that's it for now guys thank you for watching our video please subscribe and keep watching for more videos bye